Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink I have in sample form, but I actually have it in, I don't know, I guess large sample form. Uh, it was donated by the wonderful, original, Mysterious Petifactor. It is a Noodler's Ink, exclusive to Fountain Pen Hospital of New York City, and it is Henry Hudson Blue. Now, obviously, because I don't have the bottle, uh, I don't have all of the uh, information that comes with it. However, uh, my personal experience with noodlers tells me that when something looks like this, it's going to have some special properties. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely got something going on. So, here we go. Yeah, so, two pens I used were these. Uh, and the reason why was because, well, uh... I could tell that there was something sort of funky about this ink, and so if something went wrong, I wouldn't mind losing a couple preppies, so I thought I'd start there. So, I have two preppies, and actually the ink is still in there, uh, and this is a standard 05 or medium preppy, and uh, does it right? It does! Okay, so it does that. That's good. And the other one is one that I have stubbed, and actually I quite enjoy making stubs of uh, these preppies because this metal nib is so fine, it, or so thin, because it's just a, a little sheet of metal, that it can create a very drastic line difference. And yeah. And as you might be able to tell, uh, the stub is actually a good bit wetter. But preppies do tend to run a bit dry, so kind of to the benefit. Alright, so let's check out some comparisons. But first, I kind of want to bring this in, because I hope this will come through. Um, I don't know if it will, but there is a definite texture to this ink. You might be able to tell that it has some sort of intense opacity to it. And, uh, there, it, it doesn't quite, I don't know if I'd call it sheen so much as it gets shiny, almost like an oil slick. Uh, and, uh, in the test I actually said that it smells like Upper Ganges Blue, which is a super permanent ink by Noodlers. Uh, so, if you're familiar with that. So, comparisons, here's... Henry Hudson Blue and Private Reserve Invincible Blue, which is also a very resistant blue ink. You, can, you might be able to tell there's some sort of pink-ish, sort of subtle purpley undertones here. And we also get it here with the Invincible Blue. Uh, another one, and again this one also has properties, is Mont Blanc Permanent Blue. And again, we have some opacity, we have some hints of pink underneath. Uh, another permanent blue is Diatramentus Document Blue. Now this is the standard document blue, not light blue or dark blue. Uh, this one doesn't have the same sort of, I don't know, shading, but it does have the similar sort of texture, that sort of woolly finish. And this one does not share the properties, but I thought the color was slightly similar. And I now have, uh, yeah, well over 600 swatches to choose from, and this one really was the next closest. This is Ackerman Double Zero. Oh god, I'm gonna murder this. Uh, Royal Ackerman Blau to Swiss Bar. Royal Ackerman Blau to Swiss Bar. I don't know. Um, I really would need to watch that pronunci vid pronunciation video again, but um, yeah, this one I thought sort of the darker parts through here looked quite like the lighter parts through here, and it does have a little bit of that texture, but yeah. So there you go, there are your comparables. Uh, bear with me while I zoom in. Okay, so here's the uh, chromatography. This uh, one on the right here with the D in the corner, that is the one that I let dry. And uh, even though it's not how you're supposed to do it, I feel like it's really revealed a lot, and I'm going to explain why that's particularly true in this case. Now here's the one that's done as you're supposed to do it, where you put the line of ink and pretty much like essentially just instantly dunk it in water. As you can see, there is a little bit of something left behind. You can see this dark ring around the bottom. And you can see sort of these hints of this blue up here. And it was pushing the ink up, but as it was getting pushed up and the further it went up, it would sort of clump together in this weird pattern. And it wouldn't want to let the water through. It actually was stopping the water from going through for a bit. And it was not until it was almost dry that this pink stuff, this bright pink stuff, revealed itself at the top. Now, with this one, or I let it dry, I only let it dry 
uh, for as long as it took this whole test to dry, so maybe 10-15 minutes. This blue right here solidified. It turned into an almost plasticky kind of substance, and when I dunked it in the water, so I dunked it, you know, here below the, the line, um, it would not, the water could not move through this blue stuff once it had dried. And I actually tried sort of dipping it further into the water, so if, like this is the water line, I tried doing that, and the water would bubble out and resist. It would not touch this blue thing. Uh, I think I have a video of it, if so I'll insert it here. And uh, even still, what I did was I literally just left this thing hanging in the water, sort of like, it took, I think, some, it took over 20 minutes for the water to just, by sheer exposure, to like break through this, but even still, all I did was push this pink up. So, this would indicate that this is a highly water-resistant ink, however, it clearly has properties that uh, could be dangerous to your pens. Um, Dangerous, I mean, uh, it could it could cause some, some problems, and uh, that's actually why I haven't cleaned these preppies yet, because I am, honest to goodness, afraid. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, they're $3 pens, but still, you don't want to, like, wash out a pen and find out it's broken, so, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, maybe I'll make a follow-up video, and I'll, uh, or, you know, like, a clip saying what it's like to wash it out, but I've been avoiding it because I know it's going to be awful. Okay, so, chemical test, or what I've come to call a chemical test. Now, this had about an hour to dry, um, so not the longest amount of time, but considering what an effect just like 10 or 15 minutes had, whatever this stuff is, it bonds with paper very quickly. But, uh, yeah, so water, it did not move. Um, what you see here, that is actually the paper breaking up from me literally trying to, like, scrub this water in. That is not... That is not the water naturally breaking it down. Now, one-third bleach solution did start to break it up, but you also see it started to break up the paper as well. That paper is coming apart. And uh, the same with ammonia pen flush. But actually, ammonia pen flush didn't get it moving anywhere near as much as bleach did. It still started to break up the paper. And hydrogen peroxide, much like water, really didn't do much, and it just, like, it was mostly my scrubbing that sort of made it freak out. So, yes, paper test. Top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's an interesting, it's got a, a texture to it. If you're familiar with Upper Ganges Blue, uh, that sort of has like a wooly, like, uh, like a matte finish to it. This definitely has that sort of feeling. Um, it is an interesting shade of blue. It's almost periwinkle. It has hints of that sort of like soft purple. Uh, and so as I said at the beginning, preppies do tend to run a bit dry, and uh, this is a strangely behaving ink. It has properties. It's a little aggressive. So that medium standard preppy took seven seconds to dry. The stub, which is a little wet, took 18. But yeah, you can see that there's some, there's some nice shading, and I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. I feel like it's going to be one of those days. Yeah, no. Uh, where it's really, really dense, you get this almost shiny purple. Again, kind of like an oil slick. Uh, but yeah, fairly well behaved. As I say, it smells like Upper Ganges. Uh, I think this bit of Clairefontaine was a bit affected. I think it was uh, like nature starting to take its course. Uh, it was oxygen affected. But I want you to look at this water test. It almost looks like there wasn't a water test. It is so water fast, it is almost frightening. Literally the only thing that changed, and I have to bring it in real close for this, is you can see that the texture of the paper was made rougher from the exposure to water. Like, see how, here how it's like still very neat and shiny? And here you can sort of start to see the pulp? Yeah, that is how long I let this soak. This, this ink is super water resistant. Now, next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. It's an 85 gram per square meter paper. Honestly, the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's often capable of handling inks that other papers can struggle with. 
And this one, it certainly handled it just fine. Now, that standard medium preppy took six seconds. Uh, the stub, which is a bit wet, took 16. And I just want you to look at that smear for the stub. See the parts that really smeared, how they turned pink? And it's kind of hints at this kind of pink. There's something very strange about this ink. But yeah, again, uh, we sort of have that dusty color. It's slightly matte, but it's very opaque. It's a very, whatever's in this ink, it's dense, and I hope this shows up. There we go. See the bottom scrubby? We're starting to see some, like, shiny bits, but it's still like a matte shine. It's, it's not like the standard sheen we see in a lot of other inks. And actually, in a lot of places where I was using that stub, we're going to get that shine. And again, that stub is a bit wet, so. But again, uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. Is that sheen? Is it shine? I really don't know. Uh, you decide. Call it what you want. And again, this water test, it looks like there wasn't even a water test. I mean, it looks the same. With the single example of the texture of the paper has violently changed. Because that is just how hard I went after this ink. I was letting it soak and soak and soak and trying to get this stuff to release, and it really didn't. The only thing we got, and actually it's hard to see on here, we got a tiny bit of the pink poking out of the back of the Clairefontaine. That's pretty much it. Now next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. I feel like everyone's pretty familiar with this stuff. Uh, yeah, the standard little medium preppy took uh, six seconds to dry. The stub took 14. And again, here we see this, this density of color. When you put down enough ink, you can absolutely blot out those lines. And again, it gets shiny where it's laid on heaviest, but it still kind of has this matte texture finish. And I hope you can see what I mean about this sort of like hints of periwinkle. Like it has just the littlest hint of purple. Like, I don't know, like it dreamed about purple yesterday, you know, like a vague, vague purpliness to it. But yeah, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. I see there's no sheen and that's just because I still don't know if this is technically sheen or if it's shine because it really is a shine. It looks like an oil slick. It's, it's a strange texture. But yeah, again, water test. This stuff is super water resistant. And again, I feel like I have to bring this in because like the easiest way to tell that there was a water test here is just because the texture of the paper changed. Like you can see it, you see the pattern of the paper. And then up here you don't. So yeah, it's uh, you would not be able to tell that water got on that. So if you need something that's super water resistant, there's this stuff. The only problem is whatever, whatever gives it this, this thing uh, makes me very hesitant to recommend you use it in anything you aren't willing to part with. Um, but yeah, so next up is Tomoe River Paper, which is known for drawing out shading and sheen and dry times and echo, and I feel like we kind of got all of that. Uh, here we get a lot of shine. And I think that's partly just because of how this paper works. It is just fundamentally different. I don't know what it is. It's created by dark sorcerers, I'm pretty sure. Because just everything shines. Like, everything shines everywhere. But yeah, uh, again, we have very lovely shading. We have a very distinct difference in, in what the writing looks like in that wet stub. Like, if you see jumped versus the jump above with the rounded dryer preppy. Just looks different, but they both look good. Uh, now, again, this paper is known for drawing out dry time, so that medium, st you know, dry like most preppies, uh, took 14 seconds to dry. The fairly wet stuff took 24. Honestly, I mean, like, past couple of weeks uh, in some of the tests I've been doing, especially with like an iron gall ink uh, that I tested yesterday, it took more than a minute. Um, so 24 seconds, I'll totally take it. That's just fine. Now, uh, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. You wouldn't expect to see that on the Tomoe River because that's part of the powers imbued by it with the dark sorcerers. Like, that's just one of the things this paper just doesn't do. However, as you might be able to tell when it's not at an angle where it can sheen, where it's laid on pretty thick, it can get kind of dark, and this is obscenely thin paper. This is 52 grams per square meter. It's practically, it's almost half as thin as Clairefontaine. So it does, have an extreme susceptibility to echo. So if you're very sensitive to it, that might be something you want to keep an eye on. But again, I mean, it's mostly in the stub where it's laid on really, really thick, where so it gets darker. But again, that's always to taste. 
But Chumoy River loves to let ink slide away when you add more water. Here, it didn't. To the point that I am, like, when I was re-looking at these tests, I wondered if I had actually tested this paper. I mean, obviously I had, because as you might be able to tell, again, the texture of the paper has changed because of just how much I let it soak. But look, it is absolutely there. It is completely clear. It is readable. You can still see a little bit of the, or the equivalent of the shading that you'd see above. Here, like where I usually put like a big blob of water, you can't tell where that big blob of water is, or was. That is some extreme water resistance. Now, next up, uh, the next three tests. I only use that drier writing medium, except to write the name, just to be fair, because these are much more economically produced papers. And this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. Like, I can pretty much guarantee you have something better than this. This is probably one of the worst papers I've ever encountered. And please, please, please trust me, that is really saying something. So I can pretty much guarantee you have something at least a step up from this. But, I just wanna show you this. Now, we do get a little bit of spread, but not a whole lot. So the line width did increase a little bit, but not a ton. And actually, in, in this bit, I was actually a little hard on it because when I was reading over the notes again before getting ready to record, I just wanted to show you, we don't have a lot of feathers. We have a couple, like at the bottom of where the E and A meet in East. But really, really not much. Took half a second to dry. We don't really have any shading. It's sort of like this flat, uh, almost periwinkle color, but it's really not bad. So we have spread, but it's really not too bad. We have the odd feather. I mean, it's really not much like the R in feathering. For the most part, it's pretty all right. We have near bleed. I want to show you this. Now up here, that's the stub, and this is the corner of a large sheet of paper. But as we get further in this way, we get dots where it gets dark, but you see how hazy they are? They're not coming out the back, and they never rendered onto the page below, which was way more than I was expecting, because this is obviously an aggressive ink. So actually, this really surprised me. Now, I do want to show you this. I hope the camera will calm down. So. That's not the light showing the ink through, that is pink. The same pink that we see in the chromatography is literally being washed out the back. I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to point that out. But again, water test. We look at it. Now, more absorbent papers tend to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out, but I don't think that's what's happening here. I think it's just whatever this ink is doing, whatever it's made out of, it is super resistant. Bear in mind, this was only dried on this paper for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes? That is some serious bonding, which again makes me kind of question what's going on here, like what this ink is made out of, because it's got to be pretty aggressive. But it's very clear, very there, didn't feather, didn't explode. We don't even see like a pink halo around it. The pink is just coming out the back. So, fascinating stuff going on here. Now, next up is me notebook paper. Uh, it's very common for school children in the United States. Uh, this is the kind you'd find in like a spiral notebook, not the kind you'd find in a composition book. Uh, and lately this stuff has been feathering like crazy. And while it did feather a bit on here, I also just want to show you. So here's the 20 pound. Here's the mead. It didn't spread nearly as much. In fact, if we bring this in, you can see that it barely spread at all. So that's very encouraging. Now, we, as I say here, we retain about 2% shading. Come on, camera. So you can see a little bit of it in places. And, well, I say that it does feather some. So it took half a second to dry on the 20 pound. It only took a second and a half to dry on here. I just want you to see this. If you've seen some of my tests with this paper before, you know how much it loves to feather. But here, I mean, like, bottom of the Q, or, or bottom of the U and quick, bottom of the E and the... We really don't have much. We really don't have a lot of feathering, like maybe the two and 2%, but like most of it is doing quite well. Now, this paper is physically thinner than 20 pounds. So just keep that in mind. But this is even more, like whatever comes through, it's even more opaque than the 20 pound. 
Like nothing, absolutely nothing is coming through to the other side. You can just tell that something sunk into the paper, but it's not coming out the back, which really impressed me because again, this is some kind of weird aggressive ink. I was, I was not expecting this. So we don't have as much spread as we do on the 20 pound. We have nowhere near as much feathering as we normally have. We have essentially no bleed. And this water test, look at how much of the paper was affected. Come on camera, calm down. Come on. Well anyways, uh, like the whole thing is just like pillowed out. It's doing weird stuff. But now this paper loves to freak out when you add water. It'll like feather and explode. It'll look like a cactus monster. No. Look at this. You can barely tell that there was a water test. The only thing that gives it away is the paper. Very clear. Very there. Very readable. Very recoverable. And again, we just have the hints of pink coming out the back. Now, lastly, is moleskin notebook paper, which I hate because it's awful. It is very cheaply produced and they make you pay a lot of money for it and I don't think that's fair and so I don't like it. It really just comes down to that because it's poorly made paper. Now it took four and a half seconds to dry on here and here we once again retain that really kind of matte finish you know like it's it yeah it's got a weird texture but again I just want to show you well yes we do have feathering there is feathering and there is a uh, wooliness in spots it is really nowhere near what we usually see. Like this is fairly contained and there actually isn't that much spread compared to the mead paper. And there's certainly much less than there is on the 20 pound. I'll have to give it that. I mean, now we have no full bleed on here, which I don't know if you know how rare that is for this. Now we do have some spots where it's nearly to the back, but it never rendered onto the page below, which lately is like a miracle. And in fact, this bit right here was written with that wet writing stub. We do see some dots that are starting to come all the way to the back, but nothing comes through. This paper, more than any other, can do weird things when you add water. No, it didn't feather, it didn't explode. It's quite well behaved, honestly. I think the next time I go on a trip, I'm just going to take some of this stuff with me and I'm going to put it in a preppy and I'm going to call it a day because I literally have like 40 moleskins I can't get rid of. Insert picture here. And I got to find something to do with them. But yeah, so honestly, honestly, I don't know what to make of this ink. I'll be perfectly frank about that. Uh... Now it is exclusive to a pen shop in New York City, however it's probably one of the biggest pen shops in the country, so I'm pretty sure you can get it online. Uh, it has an interesting finish to it. It can harden like plastic uh, on fibers. It is extremely water resistant. It behaved way better than I thought on cheap paper. It actually behaved itself fairly well on premium paper. I don't know. The thing is, I know it has troublesome properties because I know it is hard to remove and so I am afraid of washing it out of these pens. I'm almost considering just committing these to Henry Hudson Blue and calling it a day but uh yeah you know if you're familiar with this ink um please leave a message down below in fact when uh the mysterious penefactor sent this to me he sent me a pen that he essentially gave up on because he put this in it and couldn't get it to work again. He was just so uh yeah. If you're familiar with this, I really do want to hear your stories. Uh, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.